Hi there and welcome to another workout for you to row along to. Today's row is a nice simple one. We're just going to row for 36 minutes and we're going to break it into 12 minute chunks with no rests but just 12 minute chunks and we're going to do the first one at 20 strokes per minute. Then the middle one you're going to do at 18 and then you're going to go back up to 20 strokes a minute for the third one. So a nice slow low rate workout. Now the pace guide is going to be round about 2k plus 18 for the 20 strokes a minute and 2k plus 20 for the 18 strokes a minute. However, the reason I'm saying however and around about uh, is that I'd rather you went slower than faster, okay? So it's important that you just slow everything down and take these low intensity rows as nice gentle rows to help boost your base fitness, to give you time and space to work on your technique and to also give you a chance for your body to recover after what was just a very intense session the day before and what is going to be a ten an intense, not a tense, <laughs> intense session the next day too. If you don't allow these low intensity bottom tier rows to give your body a chance to recover, you're just going to end up getting more and more exhausted as you go through this plan and you're not going to have it in you to be able to perform properly when you're meant to, okay? Lecture over, okay? Well, I say that, I'll probably bring it up again. So before we can get into our, our main row, uh, we need to set up our machine. Now, I'll go through this as quick as I can. On a concept two, that means going to your drag factor first and setting that to where you want it to be. If you don't know about drag factor, then I have a video here on this YouTube channel. If you know about it, but don't know where to set it, then I recommend starting off round about 130 and then adjusting from there. If you just know nothing then about this, just set your lever between four and five, because too low isn't the problem, too high is the issue when it comes to drag factor. Next up, oh sorry, if you're not on the concept two then just set the weight of the stroke so that you get a nice feel from it but it's not too heavy, okay? Next up, if you can, please set your monitor to, to eye height, to, 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 to eye height so you don't have to look up and you don't have to look down, both of which will ruin your posture. And finally, if your machine allows you to adjust the height of your foot stretchers, please set it so you're able to come into the front of the machine with your shins in a vertical position, okay? So pointing straight up. If you're set too low, you might go scooting straight past that. That can cause power leaks, but also the potential for a tweaked back. If you're set too high, then it could be a little bit of a struggle to get into that shin's vertical position, all right? So our four minute warm up. we're gonna start this run about 20 strokes a minute. And the power, I just want you to think about pushing enough from your legs as though you were standing up, okay? So really no power for the first minute because I want you to work on the timing between that foot press and your hands connecting the handle to the machine, okay? So here we go. In three, two, one, let's go. Sorry, I had a little bit of a wriggle with my backside there. So like I say, enough power as though you were just standing up. And this way, you're not kind of concentrating too much about, oh, I'm trying to hold a pace, I'm trying to hold a pace. And you can just think about when your feet push and when your hands connect the handle to the machine. And that means the point when like the chain connects to the flywheel or the blades start spinning in the water wheel, whatever you're using. So you want to get it so that they both happen at the same time. And that's how the power goes efficiently and fluidly from your feet or your legs into the machine. So you want them both to happen at the same time. And if you think you've got that timing correct, then you can start to think about just upping the intensity slightly to run about a five out of 10 effort, or if you have a 2K training pace, you're looking for round about 2K plus 18. So enough that you can feel your body starting to warm up, but not so much that you're tiring yourself out and actually rowing faster than you will in the main session. Because remember, today's main session is a low intensity, long, slow row. So you actually don't need to be particularly warm for it. You just need to make sure your body is moving properly. 
Okay, one more stroke. Then I'm gonna put one foot on the ground and then I'm gonna continue rowing with just my left leg strapped in. And this will help open up your hips, maybe help with the forwards tilt into the front of the machine. And then that backwards tilt at the back of the stroke. One more, and we'll swap over our feet. There we go. Now don't worry too much about pace between the two legs. I mean, if there's a huge, like, 10 second discrepancy, that can often mean you've got a bit of a muscle imbalance or something, but a few seconds, that's okay. It could just be that you're not quite settled into single leg rowing. Okay, both feet back in, legs straight, and roll with your back and arms. So, swing over your back to pick up the initial tension of your chain or strap, whatever you're using, and then pull in the arms. And then you release the arms and swing back forwards over your hips again. One more here. And roll to the front. I'm gonna tighten my straps on the way. Arms straight, forwards tilt, and just press lightly out from the front. Hold this forwards tilt and straight arms. This is the important part of this drill, is that you get used to being in this position as you drive. So don't push too hard with the legs because that'll cause you to recoil. And this is just getting you used to driving with the legs and not using your arms and back too soon. Last one. Just one stroke too many there, I think. <laughs> so that's the warm-up. Hopefully you're all in a good place for the main session. Have a quick drink, keep moving up and down the rail, and I'll quickly say one more time what it is we're doing today. Okay then, so today is a very simple row. It's just gonna be 36 minutes, no rests, but broken into three 12 minute chunks. The first of which you're gonna do at 20 strokes a minute, then down to 18 strokes a minute, then back up to 20 strokes a minute again. And pace wise, well, I want you to be round about 2K plus 18 for the 20 strokes a minute, and then slow down to 2K plus 20 for the 18, and then back up to 2K plus 18 for the 20s again, but, if you feel the need to go three seconds-ish slower than I've just said, then please do, because slower is better. The moment this row starts to feel hard, you're going too fast, okay? Simple as that. So, let's talk in more rowing. I should put that on a t-shirt, eh? I might do. <laughs> let's talk in more rowing. Okay, so I'm gonna do this first one, 20 strokes a minute. Uh, you can follow me for stroke rate on the video. You can listen to me on the podcast, uh, hear the whoosh of my flywheel, but hopefully you'll get the rhythm pretty soon. Okay, so run about 2K plus 18 pace in three, two, one. Let's go. So if you ever get lost at 20 strokes a minute for kind of rhythm and things, just remember, one stroke every three seconds. And the great thing about thinking about it that way is that it's really easy to break it into three component parts. The drive for one second, then the release for one second, and then the recovery or the slide for one second. And if you kind of think of it that way, everything is very fluid. Everything just rolls into the next part of the sequence. I've never stopped. It's never a point when I'm holding the handle in to my chest or hovering at the front of the machine, trying to soak up time. Everything's just nice and fluid. Oh. So this is actually a little bit of a 
time travel rule for me. It's the second time I've done this. I'm actually in real time right at the end of the plan. I recorded week five, session three yesterday. And then following that as a rest day, which I'm clearly not doing, <laughs> to then set up for what's gonna be like, I keep calling it the big test, whether that's a 1K row or whatever you fancy. However, the first time round doing week two, session four of the 1K plan, my camera cut out. So I've had a temporary holding pattern video sitting up here for the past few weeks. And just because of how my training diary and home commitments fall this week, it meant that today, Friday, I'm able to row. Tomorrow, I can't. I've got band practice tomorrow. Uh, so tomorrow is my rest day. And then Sunday is the big final row of this plan for me. But the good thing is, from doing it this way, it means I can come back from the future and kind of describe a couple of things about the plan. One of which I've already covered, and that's the importance of not rowing these low intensity workouts too fast. But the other is that the plan really works. If you think back to not that long ago, as far as you're concerned, week one, session one, that was eight one minute intervals at whatever your current 1k pace was, I really struggled. I was very surprised, to be honest, at how slow I was rowing, unable to get stroke rate or power up to where I wanted it to be. And although I won't give away any spoilers, what I will say is that by week five, session three, I was rowing a lot faster than I was in session one of week one. And whether it's just that it unlocked speed and power that was already inside me, or whether it developed that speed, or whether it just gave me the mental fortitude to be able to row that fast that many times. Who knows? But the truth is, the plan works. So, keep on going with it. Stick to the basic principles of this plan, which are don't push the slow stuff, push the fast stuff. And like I say, that's the point. You use rows like this to build your fitness, to work on your technique, to give yourself a chance to 
recover because there's always a tough session before and after these easier low intensity workouts and so if you have just done one and push this too hard this low intensity one then your body won't have recovered properly from the tough session the day before and you won't have recovered enough for the tough session to follow it may not be as ego friendly rowing at 2k plus 18 or 2k plus 20 but trust me this really is where your fitness and your skill is born to then allow you to do those fast ego satisfying rows when you want to and there's enough of them in this plan there's enough sessions I mean three a week three fast sessions only two slow ones and if you try and turn these slow ones into fast ones too well you're just gonna burn yourself out even if you take the other two days of the week as rest days right. I said lecture over <laughs> before but you knew there's no way I was going to leave that alone so hopefully as we come to nine minutes in which is as a quarter of the way through you've hit that rhythm that flow of the stroke and you're just powering along with your stroke rate and pace not fluctuating by much again one second up or down I'm okay with as long as you mostly see either your goal pace or one second slower and then stroke rate well especially for 20 strokes a minute stroke rate should be relatively solid because of that one stroke every three seconds thing it's one thing to be at like 22 which is quite awkward and bump up and down the odd stroke but for 20s 95% of the time you should be locked on <laughs> that said the irony of the fact that in that last minute talking about stroke rate I jumped up to 21 and then fell down to 19 <laughs> so do what I say not what I do <laughs> All right, so we've got one more minute at 20. And then as we drop to 18, I'll do a brief, well, it's me. Who am I kidding? It won't be brief. I'll do a recap of technique. Because by now you should be fully 
warmed up but hopefully nowhere near tired or fatigued the only reason my heart rate is up at 135 is because I'm talking away to you the whole time okay so four three two one so let's drop it down by two strokes a minute and drop your pace by two seconds now 18 is still a similar rhythm except it's one stroke per 3.3 Three, 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 three seconds so it's really about getting into the fluid rhythm of drive release recover okay and flowing from state to state powerful drive handle away forward tilt then bend your knees once your hands are past your knees and your body is in that forwards rock and I mean I know it sounds a lot easier to say than do but that body angle thing really is the kind of foundation of your stroke if you can come into the front of the machine with your arms straight and a forwards tilt no matter what stroke rate you're at then you're off to a good start and then you push with the legs holding those arms straight and the forwards tilt and that's how you get the kind of weight of the stroke that hang off the handle if you don't feel that the stroke gives you enough I'm going to say resistance but that's the wrong word weight is the right word then it's likely to be that you're not getting that connection from your legs to your hands via those straight arms and the forwards tilt because what you do is as you push your hands brace against the handle as the power from your legs comes up through your body through your shoulders and your straight arms and then into your hands and because your fingers should be just hooked over the handle you're not grabbing and pulling then it's a straight line of power through your posterior chain and into the machine so apart from the understandable kind of force of hanging off the handle you're not really adding any power from your arms or back until after your leg drive has started so I drive with the legs drive swing drive swing pull so drive swing pull 
that pull of the handle doesn't happen until the back third of the stroke so drive pull drive pull and keeping those arms straight lets the power go from your legs and your back and then naturally as your back swings backwards as it would you follow with the arm pull okay and it's got to be a good amount of power from the legs whereas I started the warm up saying the power was just like you were standing up now it's like you're standing up but you're carrying a couple of cases of beer or bags of shopping or something you have to use your legs to stand up with rather than your back uh, two more strokes and then we're in the magic point it's Bon Jovi time woohoo and it's a Friday as well so means I can get to sing my new song whoa we're halfway there whoa spag ball and a beer <laughs> although <clears throat> for me right now that would be a non-alcoholic beer <sighs> but it's a Friday and if you didn't know every Friday in my house is spaghetti bolognese day spag ball it has been for about the 21 years or so that Julie and I have lived together we got to say out of roundabout well just over 1052 possible Friday night spaghettis I'm going to say tops will have missed a hundred even then I think it's probably more like 50 it's just such a tradition in my house it kind of signifies the weekend in the same way that cracking open a beer for some as they get home after a tough week or a nice glass of Chardonnay let's not forget about the wine drinkers out there and spag ball for me is the trigger that it's the weekend especially as like I say right now I'm on no alcohol beer and I have been for a good few months now on holidays I tend to still have a beer with dinner and things but when I'm back home I just don't drink a few reasons health being one of them performance being another that sluggish feeling that I'd wake up with on a Saturday morning after a few beers used to take a good few hours to shake and so if I had any kind of exercise planned especially in the morning I'd always perform poorly because my body was dehydrated or just not happy after the beer 
but really the big thing is just not needing to take in all those extra calories from beer or wine I mean a glass of beer so what, about 150 calories say I had six if I was having a fun night that's 900 calories that I don't need to be putting in my body and then factor in if I'm out with friends I'll likely come home via the chip shop and even if it's just a bag of chips that's still calories I don't really need but chances are I get like a fish and chips or a sausage supper and this is on top of already having a dinner or if I'm at home I'll have had my big plate of spaghetti bolognese I'll then have a couple of glasses of beer maybe a couple of glasses of wine but by that point the part of my brain that says no no don't eat chocolate and crisps that part of me is pretty much asleep <laughs> due to the alcohol and I just turn into a biscuit monster munching down chocolate and crisps biscuits sweets whatever is in the cupboard I know it's a failing in terms of my own restraint but it's restraint I have unless I'm drinking so made the decision to just stop drinking at home or even when I go out unless I'm on vacation okay two more strokes and then we're gonna go back up to 20 strokes a minute you ready here we go so just a bit more just a slightly harder push from the legs and what that should do is give you a slightly faster drive speed and if you then couple that with a slightly faster release and a slightly faster slide the recovery towards the front of the machine then that should be all it takes to take you from 18 strokes per minute to 20 and as a result of the combination of two extra strokes per minute and the extra power you need to put in there to get there that should be all it takes for your pace to increase by two seconds again <clears throat> so it shouldn't really be that you're needing to think about pushing really hard to get those extra two seconds stroke rate should be enough and that's what I was meaning about if you can have a good technique at every stroke rate then all it means is as you adjust the amount of push from your legs that should then fall into stroke rate and pace increases <clears throat> as you get faster and closer to like 28 30 strokes a minute and you're up at racing speed then the linear progression 
of power from your legs in seconds when it's combined with stroke rate that starts to leave the window <laughs> so right now I'm two strokes a minute faster and two seconds faster but by the time you get to the jumps between say 26 to 28 that's like a four second increase for me and then 30 to 32 is like two or three seconds because I start to shelve off once the rate gets too high that's one of the reasons why for this 1k plan there's quite a few high rate sessions in here so that you can get used to not just pushing in power at like 20 strokes a minute but so you can get used to rowing at a higher stroke rate and then used to rowing at a higher rate and adding in that extra oomph from your legs and stroke rate as you get faster once you get to run about 28 the concentration really needs to get to that release of the handle pushing with a load of power from your legs should take care of the drive speed element of a high rate but if you hold the handle in at a high rate you'll run out of time to recover quick enough to keep the stroke rate high there'll be you'll only ever really get to about 26 if you are holding stopped for a second I mean you can prove me wrong there but if you can drive and release without the pause it lets you flow a lot better gets you in to the recovery slide in the right position and also means you're not straining as you hold your body still at the end of a stroke because what you want to do is make sure you're in the right position for the next stroke before you start sliding and that way you can avoid any extra lunge at the front of the stroke something I have a bad habit of doing again do what I say <laughs> not what I do but I have a bad habit of coming forwards and then dipping at the front forwards dip and that loses the connection between feet back and arms whereas if I hold my fours tilt as I start to slide forwards that connection happens and my pace either maintains or goes up so finish 
hands, rock, slide. Hands, rock, slide. And the point isn't to think about it in those three individual moves. It's that the hands come away and trigger the forwards rock. And then as your hands and back reach that position, you've already got momentum carrying you forwards. So all you have to do is bend your knees to slide to the front of the machine. And you don't have to do anything with your upper body anymore. Apart from get ready to brace for the next stroke. And that's why there's no need for you to tug yourself forwards with the straps. The straps are kind of there more as a safety net to stop you falling off the back at higher rates. But at lower rates, when you drive, so you push, your legs should come down at the back of the stroke, which means all of the power from your legs have gone in to the handle and in to the flywheel. It can help to think about pointing your toes to the front of the machine. Because that way, there's no way to flick your toes up to pull on the foot straps to stop yourself at the back of the stroke. And then if you just do what I say, but hands away and forwards rock, then that momentum carries you forwards. And in fact, I'll do the cool down out of the straps just to prove that to you. Because after all, rowing should be about being able to put as much power as you're capable of or want to put in to each stroke. So in a 2K race, you want every watt of energy in your body to be going in to the drive to make sure your fitness is about making the machine go fast. It's not about stopping you at the back of the stroke or pulling yourself forwards for the next one both of which waste energy that you should be getting into the machine. Right, less than 15 strokes to go. 36 minutes is always a bit weird. It's still short, but those six minutes do understandably, make a 30 minute row feel a lot shorter. But this will have improved your core fitness and given you time to grind in a good stroke. Two more strokes, one more. All done. So there we go. So, Hopefully your response from that row will have been that it was a good long slog. Heart rate's up, breathing rate's up, but at no point did you feel, oh, I don't have it in me to finish this. If anything else, and I 
say this word with a lot of reservation. If anything else, for these low intensity, slow rows, <coughs> you should just feel bored. <laughs> now, that's kind of why I'm here, <laughs> I hope, is that all the wiffle waffle that I talk through, whether it's my dinner plans or technique or motivation or whatever, it's just enough of a distraction to stop you from being bored, to kind of go, all right, here we go, and suddenly 36 minutes is done, and you're quite happy, you're like, wow, that was a good row, 36 minutes, wow, I've never done that without him yabbering away in my ear. So that's the point, is that if you were to sit down, stick on music and do that for 36 minutes, it should be so kind of low intensity that you're like, oh man, you still get a good workout, still get a good slog, but you'll be going, oh man, this is going on a bit. And so I try and keep you company and make it a little bit more interesting than that. There's a rant I should have had at a different point, not while we were waiting to cool down, but hopefully this has given you enough time. Sorry, I'm just trying to find my two minute cool down in Erg Zone. Oh yeah, it's because I've had to scroll all the way to week two. There we go, two minute cool down. Send to PM5. Look how quick that was, apart from me not finding it in the app, <laughs> even though it's saved as a bookmark, which incidentally, if you use Erg Zone and you have found the row along track, go to the label bookmark these, and you will find like all of my warm up and cool down rows that you can quickly load up. Okay, right, so two minute cool down. Like I said, I'm out of the straps for this. Intensity is really round about what you started the warm up at. Okay, so just enough of a push to be moving, but not so much that you feel like you're working as hard as you just were. Okay, in three, two, one, go. <sighs> so just to continue the technique thing. So I'm driving out the front, legs come down. And that means the power has gone into the machine. And because my legs finish just a fraction of a second before my back and arms, what it means is that the momentum of me going backwards has pretty much all gone into the machine. And all that's really left is that final pull of the arms. So the leg drive has gone into the stroke. The back swing has gone into the stroke. And then finally, it's arms. And all I have to do is have a braced core to just soak and pull against. And that stops me from falling off the back of the machine without having to flick up my toes. And then for the recovery, hands away leads to the forward rock. That then creates the momentum that carries me forwards. And all I have to do is bend my knees to recover to the front. Now, I was reading Men's Health this month. So it'll be in the October issue, I guess. And there's a little bit in it about rowing and rowing technique. And in it, they pretty much say verbatim what I just said about arms away creating momentum to then take you forwards with the knee bend. Now, oh, hang on, two more strokes. I'll have a very quick finish on that one. I've never heard anyone else really talk about the arms away creating the momentum to bring you forwards. And all the things I've read, all the videos I've seen, never really heard anyone else say hands away, create some momentum to have the forwards tilt, blah, 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 in those words. I sort of had it, read it in Men's Health. Part of me went, if they watched one of my videos or read one of the transcripts or whatever and use my advice and put it in there, which is amazing if they did. I just wish they'd have said hello first. <laughs> anyway, right, we need to get into stretching next. Oh, I've kind of that SI joint's gone again on me. It's a bit strange. Uh, if you don't have time to stretch, please at least stretch your uh, quads and your hamstrings at one point, okay? It's really important that you stretch them off so you don't want them to tighten up, but don't do it in the shower because I don't want you to slip and fall over, okay? Or, Stretchy John has just appeared. He's still not updated, I mean, he still looks all grumpy, doesn't he? And he'll take you through some very structured stretching, or you can follow me and I will take you through some stretching in and around the rowing machine if you don't have space near you for like stretching mats and things. So, hamstrings first. My straps are still loose after that row. So put feet in, keep them loose, hands in the air, fold forwards, okay? The strap thing is just because it creates that angle enough for you to get the stretch into your hamstrings. Now I'm gonna just try and 
be very, I'm gonna do that again, in fact, hands up, fold forwards. I need to be very careful because I'm trying to stretch off. It's definitely, I was doing um, sled pushes yesterday as part of the high rocks training and I think that's what's tweaked my SI joint again. It's not nowhere near as bad as it was a couple of months ago, thankfully, but it's that kind of thing that is there. And I think if I do something wrong, it'll suddenly go back into spasm again. So I have to make sure and stretch properly. That's why we're doing it now. So, and I'll let you know if anything actually twinges at what I'm doing it. Let's do glutes next. So one leg up on the rail, other foot comes over into the crook of your knee. Bring this knee across your body, hold it in place with your other arm, hold on to the back of the machine, find a comfortable position, and then rotate down into that glute. Okay, glutes being your backside, uh, the muscles in there. And as you s rotate in, because of the, this leg being held in place across your other knee, you should feel that this is creating a stretch up through your glutes, okay? But it should all be localized down into your backside, okay? If it's all coming up too high, chances are you're not quite doing something right. And if you're getting cramp in your other leg, then you're also doing something not quite right. So just relax the leg that's up on the rail. You're not really fighting against that one. You're using this as a fulcrum point to bring your leg over, okay? So same again, hold on to the back. Oh yeah, definitely. Flexibility for turning this way is a little bit gone. It's interesting. Uh, problem is, is that I only stretch and do back exercises to protect my SI joint when I damage it. I'm not smart enough to focus more attention on it when I'm feeling healthy. And you think I'd learn. In my ripe old age, you think I'd learn. Okay. So that's glutes done. So stand up, oh. and then hold on to the monitor if you wish. Flick your other foot up. Hold on to kind of the forefoot part, the upper foot, and hold your heel against your backside. Try and keep a straight line between your shoulder, your hips, and your knee, and you should get a nice stretch into that quad as you hold it back. And again, just how much you pull that leg back, how you're what your angle of your body is like and things, that can all affect how much of a stretch you get into that leg, into that quad. So same on the other side. Oh. There we go. There you go, and hold it up. I think my balance on this leg is definitely the worst one of the two. Well, that said, I did just have to hold on to the monitor that time. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's this side, it's this leg, that side, that, that little pain down just above the, the little bump bone in your, in your hip bone. It's just where I've just got that little kind of ball of pain that something's gone wrong. Disappointed, but hey, as long as I'm careful. Like I say, tomorrow's a drumming day, not a exercise day, so hopefully the rest will be good. So, right, um, hip flexors next, put one knee in the ground. You can keep this off the ground, but it turns into a lunge onto your other leg, so just be careful. Um, knee above your ankle, and then push this hip forwards while keeping a good posture. Your other knee then goes over uh, past your ankle, and you obviously you'd, that angle between your back leg changes slightly as you push forwards. But that should, up at the top of your hip, your hip flexor, should now get a nice little stretch into it as you do this. Um, like I say, for people that uh, maybe the ground is not suitable, maybe you have the soles of the, the people that you have beaten on the rowing machine scattered around you, so <laughs> you can't kneel. You can then bring one knee up off the ground, just change legs, um, one knee up off the ground. But like I say, you then have to be very careful. Oh, I do wonder, cause that's, sorry, you just have to be careful um, that you're still getting the stretch into your hip flexor, is all I was gonna say. Yeah, definitely there's a tightness going on in this left leg as I do this. I'll make sure I've got this like various, the supine twist is a good one for stretching off my back. So. I will do that once I get back in. Uh, oh, yeah, right, sorry. I'm, I'm just making noises now. So next up, let's do, so I've got to be careful when I stand up. I'm like a wee old man. Uh, let's do shoulders next. So arms straight out in front of you, bring it across your body, much similar to what you did to your knee where you can hold it against you and then just kind of rotate into it. And just, you should feel just enough of a stretch. I mean, you're not, you're not trying to rip your shoulder off here. You're not really trying to, let's see if I can snap it. That's not the point. You just want to get to a point where you feel, oh, a nice stretch, especially because 
this is kind of the motion that you'll have been through for rowing where you're, you're it's stretched but it's not working you're kind of you're hanging off the handles so it's all about your tendons and your ligaments hanging off them rather than it's about uh, like your forearms which we'll do next um depending on especially on the sprint rowing so i've just changed arms in case you didn't in case you're listening to the podcast um the forearms on the sprint stuff if you're kind of pulling really hard to a finish to try and squeeze a little bit more pace out of it your forearms can actually take a little bit of a battering when it comes to kind of a one even a 2k and under so in that sense yes they're getting worked so you want to make sure and give them a really good stretch to kind of stretch them out but for shoulders it should just be hanging off them so forearms put your hands together in front of you like so you're praying bring them down in front so that you then created a right angle between your fingers and your wrists and your, your arms. And as you're pushing in together, um, you should find that you're underneath your forearms gets a nice little stretch here, as does your wrists. And as do you fing your fingers as well, just from kind of pushing together like this. Um, all, all of which, uh, I mean, your, your wrists are probably the only thing there that you're like, hmm, what used to they get? But your fingers will, from that kind of hooking motion of the handle when you hook, you, you can end up like with the claw. <laughs> Okay, um, what's next? Oh, biceps. So, hands behind you, so you're a ski jumper, but then rotate your thumbs outwards. And that should lengthen the long head of your bicep. The difference here being, this is, this is ski jumping like this. Ooh, okay, so you're stretching your bicep this way. As opposed to when you're actually rowing, you wanna be a water skier with them in front of you and you're hanging off the handle. You don't really see water skiers kind of fighting against the handle and fighting against it. They're nice long, they lean back nice straight and that gets the power from the boat into the skis and that's how they ski along the water. Um, triceps next, so put one hand in the air, put down your spine and then help your triceps push them back um, or push your elbow back a little bit so that it points to the sky. So the reason I fluffed that up is that I just remembered seeing something on ye old internet today saying that, uh, so it's September the 20. Second today, I think. And two days ago was the 40th anniversary of the episode that Fonzie jumped the shark. Hmm. Now, if you don't know what I'm on about, then you're obviously very young. <laughs> Swap arms. But there was a, a bit I'll explain from the beginning. There was a, a TV program uh, called Happy Days. And it was very good, set in the, was it set in the 60s? I think so. Um, and it had the Fonz, and the Fonz was really cool. Hey, the Fonz. Uh, and there was an episode in it, which is quite now widely, it's a TV vernacular now called Jumping the Shark, which is where everything just goes wrong. Um, and there's an episode of Fonz uh, on water skis jumping a pool of sharks. And people basically say that signified when Happy Days just went from like a great program into a, what on earth was that? And so it's now used, uh, people will talk about, oh, that's yeah, like Game of Thrones. Um, jumped the shark um i think for what do you want to say the last two series of it i'm not going to spoil anything but um but yeah it's certainly you're up until then it was like wow this is captivating this is amazing and then the last couple of series you're like huh and for the, what people say is it jumped the shark um yeah so for if you know what i'm on about then two days ago was the 40th anniversary of that episode of fonzie jumping the shark and, and i watched it and oh my god it's ridiculous anyway you know when they're running out, it's like when someone goes on, uh, when like a series, a, a sitcom or whatever goes on holiday. Even like when Friends went to London for um, uh, Ross's, one of Ross's myriad weddings. Um, you still kind of go, you just run out of ideas if you're going on these kind of big trips. But anyway, that said, roll along, going on a trip. <laughs> so, if only, yeah, I'll try. So there we go. Uh, last row, I'll just do all right, end workout. I'll do a recap. So since hitting go during, I think it was during the warm up. It's been 57 minutes. Of course, there's time in between, so it's not been 57 minutes for you, I hope. But I have burned active calories, according to my watch, 422, which is a lot. And then total calories, because I've also been alive for an hour, is 522. So um, that's great, a whole bunch of calories. And it means that later, when I do have a big bowl of spaghetti bolognese, I've kind of earned it because uh, I've just burnt off all those calories. Remember, though, calorie trackers and things, mm, you have to kind of get used to uh their accuracy if you're going to use one then like live with it for a couple of weeks even a month and see what happens especially if you're going to go if you're on a calorie controlled diet and you're using this to try and kind of help 
Uh, so you could say, right, I'm only meant to eat 2,000 calories a day, but I've just burnt 420. That means I can eat another 420 calories. You kind of like, if you do that and you find that you're uh, putting on weight, then there's something wrong with your tracker <laughs> or your calculations, but you get what I mean. So there we go. Uh, uh, where was this? This was week two, session four. So remember, I've gone back and did this one. Did I gone back and done this one, gone back and did this one. Oh my, oh dear, I'm speaking like an urchin. Um, yeah, that could be the hashtag for today's urchin. <laughs> for the hashtag I like to throw out at the end of a, of a row, you can say urchin. People are like, what? Um, but yeah, so uh, it's, it, trust me, like I said uh, right at the beginning, the plan works, okay? Through the four weeks, so there's basically a four week plan plus a week at the end, it's a taper week to get you ready for like a final row. Um, and so yesterday for me, it was the last session, the last big spurt before that final row. And the pace difference between what I was able to achieve in yesterday's row versus what I was able to achieve in week one, session one is huge. And it's all because of this. Okay, I'm, I'm doing high rocks training and stuff in between, but that's not really feeding into the rowing. That's just, actually, this is more feeding into high rocks. So just as a result of this, I really have sped up. So hopefully that's gonna happen with you. So please do make sure and get in touch. Either leave me a comment on the video or email me or say hello in the Facebook group and let me know how you're getting on with this, okay? Are you uh, rowing the slow one slow enough? Are you rowing the fast ones fast enough and you seeing the improvement so you can have you going ah oh, this is working I'd love to find out okay because I put these out there and people row them and um, I hit a million views today which I know from for most for the other guys that's they're like oh I did that in a week but for me that's huge because I don't push this much. I don't pay for views. I don't pay for subscribers. I don't come up with rules that in order to be part of my Facebook group, you must watch the videos and you must Instagram hashtag uh, row along all the time and stuff. I'm nowhere near that. I'm just like, come watch, spend time with me, get bored with me, go find someone else, come back to me, make a, ask for a spaghetti bolognese recipe. It's fine. I'm just here to help you hopefully entertain and motivate you a little bit on a rowing machine. So pff, hopefully that works. So do get in touch and let me know how you're getting on. That's all I'm trying to say. So, uh, it's a Friday. I'm going to go stretch off my back. I'm going to uh, get myself... It's, well, I've still got the rest of the day at work to go. Um, but yeah, and then I'll have my spaghetti bolognese and I'll be a happy bunny. Drum practice tomorrow and then Sunday will be my big fast row. So, uh, until I see you in one of my other videos, please look after yourselves. Enjoy the rest of this plan if that's what you're doing. Otherwise, enjoy whatever you're doing anytime, anywhere. Just make sure that you're happy, okay? Hey, kumbaya. So I will see you all in another video. Until then, take care. Be well. Bye.